Hello and welcome to our Magica Voxel tutorial. This is a free piece of software available for PC and Mac and it is a fantastic piece of kit. Today we will be basically exploring the very basics of the software, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it, and creating a very simple scene. When we first load up the program it, we will be greeted with this screen which will give us a blue cube and lots of little windows, which little panels, which may confuse you, so I'll quickly go through them first. Over here we have our colour palette, so where we can select our colours, which we can use for painting later on. We've got some inbuilt options already. Um, to be honest, at the moment I won't play about with these too much, but we can import other colours and save colours, etc. You've also got HCV value, so you can you know, go through, go through the scale a bit more to get exact colour you're after. Over here we have our brush tools. This is the where the majority of our work is going to be done and using. Um, down at the bottom, a point of interest is this bit here, where we can turn on grid view, edge view, which, and background off, background on, shadow on, shadow off, frame on, frame off, ground on, ground off. This can basically allow you to build exactly what you want easier and give you a bit more control. If we click on the brush up here, we open up even more options. So we have a line mode, which we can sort of cut or add or cut using a line. Um, we have the center mode, which cuts or adds everything excluding the center point of which you select. A pattern mode, which really don't bother using. Uh, voxel mode which is individual cubes which again we can set the parameters are here which we'll get into when we get to the making stage uh, face where we can just click on the face and remove everything along that axis box mode where we can draw boxes to add cut uh, etc um, we'll go into all this a bit more as we get onto the creation side uh, up here in our viewport, which is where we can see what we're creating and drawing canvas as it were, we have our render options, which we'll go into towards the end of this video. A name where we can rename our model. So let's rename this model test for the purposes of testing and just save that. Up here we have our canvas size, so we can adjust that to give us a bit more space to work with. There we go. For a uh, shrink size, which I'm not going to press because I'm recording this. Here we have our edit panel, which gives us our sort of tools to change the entire scene, as it were. So we can do things like flip, loop, which pushes it around and loops it around the entire frame, pre built shapes, which we can just click on. I'm not going to play about with these too much because, to be honest, it's not really worth messing about with too much. But and over here we have our model tool, which basically gives you all the models that we've got saved of our own and ones that come with it. So if we have a look at the ones that come with the software already, we have some basic cubes, a very nifty castle, little pixel car character, you can sort of rotate around few more characters, Doom pixel art, nifty little castle, with abstract shapes, shelf and the customary teapot model. <laughs> so first thing we want to do is we want to basically get rid of the cube that it gives us originally. So if we go to tool in our edit panel and click zero, that removes it. There we go. And then we go back over to our brush tool. First off, we need to get ourselves into a position where we can work from or what's most comfortable to us. If we use our left mouse button and click and move around, we can rotate around. Middle mouse button, zoom in and out. If we push and hold that, we can pan. And the right mouse button is our selection tool. Where this red cube is, is our basically our selecting area, as it were, our clicking point. So if we go to let's just let's draw a um 
Let's try and make a tree or something a bit more. Let's try and make a tree. I think that's probably a bit more interesting than a corridor. So if we go down here to our Vox controls, we've got pre-built shapes like sphere and cube. Um, if we want to build a cube of a certain size, we can say 10. So that's would be 10 by 10 by 10. So if we go to attach, we can actually see our shape. I'll turn on grid for the purpose of the scene. So as you see, it's 10 pic uh, well pixels, I suppose, by 10. Um, yeah, we can also adjust that and we can 2D it and surface it, which is very similar at the moment, but surface draws over a shape like that, so we can kind of overlap it a bit. Again, don't really want that at the moment. So for the purposes of drawing a tree, we're going to want to have a sphere tool, I think, and we want it to be 3D. So let's grab our nice brown colour first. We could give a bit more control to this, and we just want to sort of click and drag it on top so it sort of builds up creates a kind of natural form to it this is not going to be a, the most amazing tree in the world doing this in kind of a very wish way I'd say if you've got more time you can obviously make these things better if we sort of click and drag and add a bit create some branches like that do something this way it's a very very abstract tree I will say Um, if we made a mistake, we can just erase it down here by saying what rain is attaching things, we can just click and remove them. If you see here, we've got a kind of shape where it doesn't look natural. We can kind of fill it out a bit, kind of bring it forward a bit, give it a bit of a rootish shape to it at the bottom. You don't not with natural forms, you want it to be not too symmetrical, you want it to be kind of a little bit gnarled or a bit a bit irregular, I suppose, is the best way of saying it. Because nature does not shape things very often in a very unnatural manner. Let's put this surface kind of shape because that'll give us a bit more of a Okay, there's our very poor tree. I'm just going to increase this height a bit. Increase these values so a bit more space to work with. Okay, so now I want to put some leaves on it so we'll get some, get green, get a nice, get a nice green. And we will use a sphere tool again. Cubes I'd say are better for kind of, um, well, constructive shapes, natural uh, man-made shapes I mean. Uh, we don't want surface, we want 3D because we're going to make it a kind of bushy tree. I'm just want to click around a bit sporadically. Whoa, a bit, a bit too sporadically there. Yee. If we want, don't want to undo things, we can just control Z or undo up there. So I'm going to just follow the contours a bit, try and cover up some of the trees but leave some of the branches kind of exposed a little bit. See here it's not gone quite well because I've kind of hit the edge of the shape. I want to cut away a little bit into it, so we're cutting in as well as adding on. If you, those of you who play things like Minecraft and build things in that, you, you know, you're probably better builders than I am. I'm just wishing this for the purposes of a video. So let's say that's this is our tree, our very, very primitive tree. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put some grass on the bottom. I'm going to do this as a face, uh, attach this down here to the bottom. There we go, <laughs> there's some grass. Okay. Um, now the leaves look a bit too one coloured, so you wouldn't naturally get that, you'd get a kind of tonal effect. So let's paint in a slight different green. Uh, let's go with kind of green a bit and sporadically paint that again. You could spend longer on this. I'm literally just clicking randomly and just to try and show off the basics of this software. I would definitely recommend spending longer than, well, a minute or two <laughs> on this. The same would probably want to do with the tree as well, or the bark would want to actually kind of 
adjust the colour on there and give a bit of a different tone as well. Maybe a bit lighter on here, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, got a bit too mad there. Anyway, you get, the, you get the point. If you've got a lot of time, you can make this look a lot better than what I've done. So we can zoom in out. See, not too bad from a distance. Terrible up close. Right, so that's how our primitive shape created. Let's go to our render tool. Now, this looks quite nice, I suppose. I mean, this building doesn't, but you know, you'd do better. You can turn off them so you can give it a bit more of a accurate view. If we want to see it as it would look as a model, we can click on the render tool. This will take a while, depending on your system. As you see, it's kind of smoothing out the edges, making the lighting a bit more detailed, trying to make everything look a bit, a bit crisper. Okay, just a shadow a bit. Uh, I want it to be a bit darker, actually. A bit there. So. Over here we have some cool options, so if we go to this option here first and we go to our shape, so as you see at the moment it's default cube, if we click on Lego, something quite amazing and cool will happen. Basically all of our blocks are now Lego pieces, it creates a kind of visual overlay of the Lego connection pieces, which is just, I think it's a really cool effect and it looks really good, especially in when we export a screenshot of it in our render. And if we combine it with some of the other tools, I'll show you in a sec. We can go to our MC, which smooths it out a bit more, which gives it a kind of semi-polygonal look to it. Got rounded grids, which smooths off the cubes a bit. Rounded edges, which is a... They're going to smooth off the cubes again, but not in a kind of segregated manner. Spheres, which turns all the cubes into circles. And cylindrical. Again, we can kind of... You can toggle all the options again with this. I'm going back to uh, cube because some of these effects won't work with these, which is a bit of a shame. Now, if we go over here to our metal, we can give it a metal value. So if we turn up the metal, this will take a while. You see it suddenly got shinier. So where the light hits it, it's going to reflect a bit more. And it kind of reflects the colours and the materials around it. We can rough it up a bit if we want to, to make it a bit less, etc. Give it a plastic look if we want to, so it's... See, already it's looking quite different to what it looks like in our editor view. If we wanted to go back, we could just click on that and continue working on it. We go to glass. Let's turn off the metal first, actually, so we can see the differences. So we just drag all those values down. We go to glass and we can turn on glass default. As you see, now we've got a completely transparent glass object, but we can dial that down a bit, give it a bit of translucency so you can just see through it. This does take a while to render sometimes. You can rough it up a bit. You can just kind of give it kind of weird um, just little effects just to get the exact look you're after. Again, I can turn all that off again. Go to emission, we can make it emit its own light which I don't really ever use. <laughs> now, if we want to just, let's say, make the uh, but, um, trunk of the tree kind of glass, we can go on to the select option up here. We hold, uh, we click the, well, yeah, we hold the Alt key and we left click on the material color object over here. So we click on the brown. Now everything of that brown color, we can go over to here, give it a glass value. Give it the dial it down a bit. Now as you see everything that's of that exact brown is now been turned into a glass object. Turn it down a bit. We can click on this green here, we can go to metal, we can turn that into a metal up there. We can click on that green there, go to emission, make it emit a bit of power, reduce the glow a bit. So you can combine effects. No, I don't like the glow at all. But yeah, as you see, we can kind of create something quite cool. If you spend a while with this, you could build pretty much everything you build in Minecraft, you could create yourself. 
again in this. And then we can literally go to export and export as a 3D model, as an .obg, obj, sorry. And that could be used in things like Blender, Unity, Unreal, you name it. That's a 3D modeling program you could put in there and then do a bit more work to it. The only thing I'd say this software is not good for is for anything that you want to animate later on or rig. So character rigging would not be ideal with the kind of models you're creating this because it doesn't lend itself very well to kind of voxel shape. So what you'd really want to do is traditional modeling principles of stop motion kind of pixel by pixel movement of the models, which would be quite time consuming, to be honest, and not something I would ever really invest my time in. But it's definitely something I'd encourage you if you've got an interest in making or having a go at it to do so. And yep, this has basically just been a very brief oversight and in, uh, into um, Magical Voxel. As with any software, I would definitely recommend that you virus scan your download. Because again, this is freeware. And look into other software such as Blender as a kind of next step, as it were. Thank you for watching.